Hello and welcome everybody. This is Joy Division with another game of Online Scythe. Today we have one of my favorite combinations. It's Nordic Industrial, three player match versus Polania and Rusviet. So Nordic Industrial, very exciting combination, specializing in mech deployment and buildings. So cool combination. Um, very, you know, heavy on mid-game improvising and making the best of what you have available to you. Nordic being able to take advantage of lakes, having a, a direct path straight to the factory makes this a powerful and fast combination. And that is my win condition here, is to try to end the game before Rusviet, um you know, overtakes me later on and before Polania has enough time to spread out. So, as with most industrial um, combinations, you are looking to finish quickly. My preferred route for this is to make two mechs and five workers before I move my main character. I like to do that because it helps me get more buildings done. Another popular way to play this board is to go straight to your encounter with three workers and move all of your left villagers to Albion's Metal. So that's another popular opening, but I prefer to go to the central wood tile right above the factory and start building. Now that's going to depend on um, what the build bonus is and you know who my opponents are. So you'll see I traded again. It's my second trade for metal. So I can get Seaworthy. And if you look, <laughs> Rusty got a pretty bad um, encounter there. Not what you wanted to see. Um, some oil would have been nice, or maybe even an unenlist would have been good. But this one is pretty notorious for being terrible. Though you could always take the popularity and. Uh, yeah, it's just not the best. When we move, we really want to find two pop for an upgrade. As with, I feel like I'm repeating myself often when I talk about industrial, but you really need an upgrade when you play this board. And you often have to get a little lucky um, to come across one. Okay, Polania with a lot of metal. They'll be getting to the factory somewhat fast, but we will beat them there which is key. Especially in a three-player game, you really want first look at the factory. Um, often it can be make or break for your bottom row action stars as a rush mat. Okay, submerge on the table. It's our big move action, so here's an encounter. And I'm moving to that wood space, like I mentioned, so I can start making buildings. Okay, let's see what we get. Okay, okay. I could take metal or a recruit. Um, four metal is going to be a lot better than two metal. I don't need the popularity. <sighs> so, if I do that, I, I never have to trade for metal again. I can get to six with just that one worker. That's pretty good. So, not, not a terrible encounter. Um, like I said earlier, an upgrade would have been clutch, but this is solid. This will help me uh, get bottom row actions done every turn. So you're looking um, at two mechs from Rusviet. They have speed and Riverwalk, I think. And now Polania is set up to make their second mech, but we are already at three and we have artillery on the table. So that's gonna be big. Our next move action is gonna take us to the factory and we're hoping to find a card that lets us spend a pop or something for any combination of upgrade, enlist, or build. Like that would be ideal for us. Another uh, sketchy encounter for Rusviet, not terribly useful in any way. <laughs> I, I guess they have had, what, 
five pop now from encounters. That's kind of crazy. I'm sure it's not what they were hoping for though. Most of the time when you, when you step on an encounter, you're looking for a bottom row action or a way to save time. And they have gotten neither of those things. Okay, big move. Um, factory. And then we have to reposition a little bit here. I can finish my fourth mech and all my workers, which seems like the play. So if I, if I move through the oil tunnel, I can get to this village and get two stars in one turn. Now, ooh, look at these cards. Okay. Build a mech, enlist an upgrade, two coins for an enlist, two co a card and a coin for two production. So card one is gonna be the best because I really need that upgrade and an enlist. While I'm not gonna get four of them, it's very nice. Um, it's very nice to have that like one-time bonus as well as those ongoing bonuses from enlist. Cause you'll notice I only have three power and one combat card. I'm gonna need more ammunition to get my combat stars. So far so good though, it's turn eight and we're really set, set up well to um, start disrupting the other players here. Rusfeet has to think about me going for that metal. Polania has to think about me you know, hiding around the lakes. Um, I'm unfortunately gonna get kicked from the factory here. Polani has a lot of power and they have two combat units, but I already have artillery, so I'll just soften them up and I'll get them back later. This is also nice because Seaworthy can put me in range of multiple encounters. So I'm gonna be able to set up my next move just fine. A key, a key thing here that some players might miss is it's very important I don't spend all my power. I need at least one power to produce. And if I, if I accidentally spent that, it would be very devastating. Because <laughs> um, I'd be missing out on two stars there. Okay, I choose that lake to um, the north. getting in the way of Polania, taking my resources away. Not that it matters that much, because I'm spending them right now. All right, four mechs, eight workers, not bad. So what I need to do now is I need to spread out and get a little bit of power and pop. I need, I need to have just a bit so I can feed my factory card and keep artillery going. Now, you'll see I traded, or I built an armory that's intentional, so I can trade for two wood and get one power. Um, that one power makes a huge difference because it can bring Polania down closer to zero. They have a pretty good encounter on their hands. Um, wow, that's a lot of food. Okay, unfortunately I can't really do anything about that right now. I'm gonna factory move to encounter. I find coins and pop. I could have taken resources, but they would likely get taken away from me. So I'm better off um, just taking the top row action. Pop will help me use my factory card and as I said earlier, I'm looking to uh, get just a little bit of power so I can start getting those combat stars done. Mm, this is nice. So a little bit of a misplay here from 
white. Um, you can see you can see that they have two lumber on the board and I can build with that instantly. So I'm gonna take their lumber away and make a building. Um, and I'll, I'll probably just take another building, why not? Get me closer to a, another star. So if I build the mine here, I can get access to more encounters, seems worth it. And then I can just build a um, monument so that if I bolster for any reason, I'll have factory fuel as well as artillery fuel in one action. Okay, great cards, but no power. I uh, look like a sitting duck, probably because I am, but again, Seaworthy makes it not that bad uh, to, get, to get attacked. I just chill on the lake, and seeing as my opponents are nowhere near um, six stars, it's not a big deal that I'm vulnerable. So like I said before, a single bolster goes a long way here. It opens up the factory action and artillery. And yeah, that's gonna be my route to finishing here is just use, use my um, enlist from the factory card to get a little more power or a little more cards and start softening up Polonia some more. I will have to find a way to get a fourth building and I don't, I don't plan on producing again. So we're gonna have to either hijack some more lumber or pick up a few more encounters to find that last building. Worst case scenario, we can always get a single upgrade from our factory card and then trade for two wood using uh, just a regular trade action so that we can, we can try to end the game by moving and building at the same time. Okay, we're getting attacked, but we're also lake blocked, so we will go home. This actually is, is fine, because one thing that players will do to um, you know, counter Nordic having Seaworthy is they will step on villagers. So step on villagers that are unprotected and send them all home. So while your mechs can stay on lakes, empty villagers cannot. But if we have one mech at home, we can bring them all out together. So we're probably not gonna move that mech that just got sent home for the rest of the game unless people start to step on our, our villagers. Okay. Another encounter. This one is not so bad, but one thing that they've had in common, the previous few Polani encounters, is it, it cost coin for option two. And that keeps them, um, it keeps your score down a little bit, which is fine with me. But they're doing well. They have they have three mechs and they have three enlists, so they're pretty close to being ready to end the game. They just need like what three to four more turns. So I'm hoping to end the game in in basically one round less than they can. Okay. So Polania now is ready for me to beat them. And uh, I will gladly do that. I'm deciding if it's best to do an encounter or a second combat. And because I only have two cards, um, it could really go either way. The advantage to doing an encounter is after the fight's over, whether I win or lose, I'll bump back up to one pop. Okay, they throw a five. Uh, some heavy cards there. But this is good because now they're at zero power and I just stay at the lake. And it's, oh nice, that's the wood I needed. Great. Now my buildings are done. Awesome. That game really wanted to uh, give me lumber this game and I'll, I'll take it. It's funny, I haven't used my factory card yet, but it's so good. Um, I should be spamming it, but there's just been better moves available. Okay, so we have two cards, we have one five, so that's a guaranteed win. Um, at least one guaranteed combat victory against Polania. 
as long as they stay at zero power. If they bump up in power, I can, I can definitely like make use of that factory card to get artillery back online. So let's see, what did what did they just do here? Oh, they got some cards. That's too bad. Okay. There's really nothing else we have to do except fight Polania. So I'm going to use my factory card and pick up some more CCs and get a combat victory. If I do this village, I block the main character in so they can't escape. And that's good because that means I'll, they can't hide from me for my last star. And I have my regular move coming up, so there's really nothing they can do to escape now that I'm on the Riverwalk tile for them and I'm on the lake. So they are stuck. Um, this also has the added bonus of pop advantage, which is my objective. Now the clock is ticking because you'll notice Rustviet has three mechs and 10 popularity. So as soon as they are ready to move, which apparently is right now, their score is gonna grow a lot. And when we talked about scaling earlier, like this is the phase of the game where Rustviet starts to, to get a lot of coins per turn by moving and spreading. Uh, fortunately for us, they don't have enough time because we are ready to end. And there is, there's really, it's checkmate, really. Um, if you look at Polanyi's main character, they are sunk. Okay, so we've got our objective, and here comes a second combat. We can just overwhelm them um, unless they have a five and all of their power, which I hope they don't. All right, that's game. Round 15, Nordic Industrial, and just in time because Rusviet was about to skyrocket and score there. Not sure how we would have answered. Um, fun stuff though, glad to bring you a look at an exciting combination from a faction not often seen. So more to come, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you all next time.